What's up guys, Mike here from Ecom Knives, and we're going to continue on with the how to make a frame lock series. Finally, finally, I know, it's like every week there's some kind of delay. This time it was for these little bitty drill bits, but we'll get to that in a second. Now last time, just a quick recap, we discovered, we finished ground our blade and we discovered our backspacer thickness needs to be 0.207. The blade thickness here is 0.167. Uh, we got that by adding 20 thousandths per side of bearing protrusion. So now we need to sink those holes into the titanium. So here's where our handles left off. And while they look like this, uh, we're going to go ahead and sink those holes for the bearings. Uh, now these are called counter bores. These are carbide tip counter bores. I get them from McMaster Car. Uh, the one size here for the bearing itself. Uh, these are the Alpha Knife Supply bearings, and they are a bit oversized, uh, but they're bearings that are on the inside, and it doesn't hurt anything if they're oversized. Uh, so this one's a 13 32nd with a 3 16th interchangeable pilot. This is the narrow shank version. Uh, I went with narrow shank just because they're cheaper from McMaster. Now this one, as you can see, it's slightly smaller than the other. This is for the Alpha Knife Supply 3 8 pivot uh, to counter bore those in. So this is a 3 8 carbide tip cutter here with a 3 16 pilot on this one as well. So inside of the scales, outside of the scales. Remember that. We're also going to install our backspacer. Now I have a small chunk of titanium here that is what is that? Two, uh, let's call it 218 thick. So we need a 207, so we're going to have to surface this down to get our 207 th thickness that we're looking for. And in order to install that in the frame, right, it's going to look something like this. We're probably going to change this a little bit because this was originally going to be uh, standoffs. So think of it like this. We're just going to kind of slap that in there like that and contour it around. And we'll drill and tap that in a couple of places. Now in order to drill and tap you're going to need the right size drill and the right size taps. So in this case titanium 256 thread form taps, that's my phone sorry about that. And just so you don't run into this issue right here that I was having with undersized drills and breaking expensive taps we're going to upgrade the tap uh, the drill size to a 564 if you could see that right there these are crappy Chinese drills but they're cobalt so they should work famous last words okay after that we're going to need a number 44 drill this is so the screw can pass through uh, one material and thread into the next so number 44 is a clearance hole for a 256 screw and a 5 64ths is the tap size drill for a 256 thread form tap. If you're going to use standard taps, it's a different size. Check your tap charts to make sure you're fitting it to the right tap. Quick note guys, make sure you mark your scales because if you get this backwards you're going to be in trouble. So we want to recess the inside pocket for the bearing. As you can see, we're at 44 right now. Still going down. We're going to go down to 62 thou. That'll give us enough clearance for our bearing and our washer. Nice and slow. About 300 RPMs on this one. Now I'm doing this by hand because titanium likes a little bit of pressure when it's cut. You just got to watch your heat when you do it this way. 61 and 62. There we go, that's 62 thou deep on both of them. And that'll give us plenty of room to drop in our washer. I'll show you really quick. And again, these are just a tiny bit oversized, as you can see. And we'll drop in our bearing as well. Let me just grab that. And our bearing. See, now you can see, just a little bit oversized that is. But, Keep in mind that the pivot is going to keep it centered. 
if I can get that in there. Of course I can't because there's a burr in there. Okay, so the pivot is going to keep that centered, so it's not going to walk around on you. It's not going to make any noise or anything like that. And this is on the inside of the frame. If anything, it's just a little bit more room to pack some grease or lube or something in there, whatever you use. Okay, uh, the pivot has to be specifically perfectly sized, so we're going to do that now. Now, because we went 62 thou deep on this, we don't want to do another... 80 thou deep for the pivot uh, or we're going to run out of titanium. Ideally I like to leave at least a 55 thou web uh, right here uh, to hold the pivot and everything uh, you know to keep the knife together essentially uh, so whatever I have left so the thickness the thickness of this minus 62 thou will tell me how much I have left and then I'll just subtract 55 thou and that's the number that I'll take out of here. It's typically for this thickness, this is a 156 thick uh, or thereabouts. So it typically leaves me about 40 thou, maybe 45 thou if I'm lucky to take out for the pivot. I haven't set my zero yet. I'm going to kind of break through that paper first. You can hear it sliding along right there. And now I'll zero it. And I'll go down our 0.045. This depth isn't all that critical as long as I stay within our margin of our margin of safety there, our, our 0.045 or less. So I mean, technically, you could make this a 0.020 if you want, uh, but you're not going to have much in in the way of recessing your pivot. As it is at 0.045, we're going to have to uh, cut down that pivot quite significantly. And there you have it. That's what we want to see, a nice surface finish inside. And there's the bearing pockets. Now that we have done our pockets, I've turned the scales so the insides are facing out like this. And I put a pivot and a stop pin through the holes. Now I'm going to take my blade and I'm just going to give it a little test fit to see where we end up in the closed position. See, now you can clearly see how much room we have to work with for a backspacer. So what I can do is, this is going to change a little bit because I'm going to have to sink this blade down just a touch. But I'm going to line all this up and I'm going to draw on it with some marker. Jeez, uh, the wind wants to rip the door open. I'm going to draw on it with some marker just so we can get a reference of what we have to work with here. You see that? Now when I take the blade off, I can see we have this whole butt end that we can work with. Now here's our backspacer. I could just kind of do one of these and then fit the blade again and cut around the backspacer that way. Uh, an alternative way, and you guys know I love my layout fluid, my dicum stuff, is now I can kind of put some dicum up up until that line and I can scribe out where I want my screws to go and I try not to get too crit oh I got too crazy with the dicum always happens yeah I got way too nutty so we're gonna let that dry now I can take my little carbide scriber and and lightly just kinda go over that with a scriber and get us a little closer than the marker and then when I move the blade, you kind of see it right there. Okay. So now I'm going to lay out the holes where I want the screws. Just kind of figure it out from here. Now, just a... Don't drop your blade. Uh, just a quick tip. Try not to put screws up here where you have such limited room to put the backspacer. You want to get in here where it's a little meatier. But you don't want to get all the way down here because, remember, our blade... We extended this, so this is unnecessary handle. Okay, so we're going to kind of thin that out a little bit later on. Ideally, you would have this figured out. Okay, okay. You would have this figured out before uh, you went into production with it. But this is a tutorial. This is just kind of a, a tag-along tutorial. So we're just going to go with it.
We'll see what happens. So here's what I've come up with so far in terms of marking out the holes for the screws to attach the backspacer and kind of cutting down this frame a little bit while leaving plenty of room for the blade. Now again, uh, I ideally you would have this all worked out in your CAD, but this knife was originally designed for, um, what do they call those things? Standoffs. Jeez. It's getting a little late here. So, as you can see, this is the blade in the closed position, and this is going to close up just a bit more, just to kind of tuck that blade in just a little bit better. Now, obviously, we don't want to get too close here, and we don't want to take off any here, because the blade's going to close a little bit, uh, but we have all this back here. So, you can see those two dots. That's where the first screw is going to be. See that there? And then the second one, I moved in just a little bit. You see the original line, and then the second line, it's on that second line. And then I can go in and kind of shave this corner back a little bit. And I still have plenty of meat down here if I want to add a lanyard hole or something like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is separate all this. All, right, all this stuff's going to come apart. and push those pivots out. Bear with me. And I just need the one that has the template on it. So that's it. So now I'm going to take those holes, and because I'm using a thread form tap, whatever drill you're going to be tapping with, uh, drill with that hole, that drill. Since we're kind of guessing at this a little bit as we go, is I'm going to take this backspacer this piece of titanium that's going to be a backspacer and I'm just going to kind of throw it over the whole mess like this something like <laughs> I'm going to do all these funny angles to hold it together okay something like something like that it's kind of goofy and we're going to waste a little bit of material but that's okay because we're going to cut all this back anyway so I'm not too terribly worried about it so I'm just going to clamp it up like this and continue using the holes we just drilled as a pilot I'm going to drill right through into the backspacer now we got the whole mess clamped up straddling that one two three block so we have a nice flat surface and we're just going to go ahead and poke through obviously I'm going to have to move the clamp from when I go and drill the other hole that's why I have two clamps so this one will stay tight I'll move the other one and then we'll drill the second hole and that's pretty much it guys it's, that's our backspacer now, all we have to do is set up the other scale so it's on this and we'll align those two holes and now we have two sets of holes through three things uh, and they all align that's the key here is getting it all to align now you have a choice of tapping either the scale and running a screw all the way through or tapping the backspacer when the backspacer is this thick I like to tap the backspacer and then run screws into it that way if you're running a very thin backspacer, if you have a very lightweight build or nice thin stock kind of knife, then you might want to tap the frame. But for something this thick, a 200 thou thick, we're going to go ahead and tap the backspacer. Now real quick, I just want to show you guys something. I put the pivot and the stop pin in to hold it aligned, but I also went ahead and added this clamp. Now to add the clamp, you want to put it on your granite service plate here like this and press this down and clamp it at the same time so this way your clamp is flush and doesn't interfere with your drilling operation so now I could put this on the one two three blocks I don't have to worry about the clamp getting in the way and I could drill my two holes and they'll be nice and aligned with the rest of the knife so we've got something accomplished today and I'm gonna kinda of wrap up the video here uh, just because I want to take this in small steps, I know the vi the series is kind of dragging along because of all the delay after delay, <clears throat> but I want to just really take our time through this series so I don't skip over anything to help you guys along. So, what did we accomplish in this one? We 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 counterboard our holes and we fitted up our backspacer. As goofy as that looks, here's the important thing the pivot is in, the stop pin is in <clears throat> and these drill bits are the same size drill bits that we use to drill these holes 
the 5 64ths, I believe it is. Yes, 5 64ths. And they move freely. Which means there's no binding anywhere. Which means the holes, everything has aligned. Right? So that's the important part of this. So we got our counter boring, that's easy. But the alignment is the important part. See, now we could take a bandsaw and cut off all this excess here and start shaping this on the grinder once we get this tapped. So as you saw from the uh, picture earlier on in the video, tapping can be a pain. So I'm going to make that uh, basically its own video, maybe tapping and, and kind of profiling this and, and cutting off all this excess here and shaping this. But we're going to take this in small steps. This way I don't glance over anything and I can kind of walk you guys through it. And I didn't forget, I wanted to say thank you to all of you guys that helped me out with the camera. Now, this is a one-shot deal uh, as far as uh, tutorials. So I didn't want to screw around with new camera stuff while I was doing a tutorial because then I'd have to remake the knife if I missed the shot. Uh, but I'm going to re I'm going to try the DSLR again using your guys tips uh, for the next Q&A session which I'm going to be filming probably tomorrow. Okay? So that's it for this one guys. This is Mike here from Ecom Knives and I'll catch you on the next video.